Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Surely the Sovereign Lord doesn't do anything without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets, Amos 3.7. It's a verse I'm sure you're all familiar with. Many think that the Gog-Magog War of Ezekiel 38 and 39, a prophecy that predicts a, a powerful uh, confederacy apparently led by Russia, 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 you know, that's, that's destined to someday invade Israel. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that. That's another video. Many think that its fulfillment is just around the corner, and I'm one of those. I believe that. However, Psalm 83 is, in my personal opinion, dearly beloved, it is unfolding before our very eyes to erase Israel's very existence from memory. The final Holocaust attempt of many past efforts, many more than which we have time to discuss. Why do I believe that? Well, I hope that this video will shed some light on that. It appears to me to be dominating every source of news now. I was asked to give my opinion on it, so I'll do that. I just ask you to take it with a grain of salt. It is my personal opinion. Oh God, do not remain silent. Do not turn a deaf ear. Do not stand aloof. Oh God, see how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their heads, Psalm 83, 1 and 2. I think they've been rearing their ugly heads for some time now. Psalm 83, which was written some 3,000 years ago by King David's worship leader Asaph during a time of great prosperity uh, liberty and peace reveals that a 10 member confederacy wants to destroy the chosen people of Israel and they want to possess the promised land. 10, not 9, not 11, 10. Now I want you to hold that thought as I go along because that's what we, we have today. Asaph uh, was not just a worshiper. According to 2 Chronicles 29.30, he was also a a prophet, a seer, and as a prophet, Asaph saw beyond David's period of peace to a time when this confederacy would seek the utter destruction of Israel. We appear to be living in that time, but not because of, so much because of what is now occurring, although that is significant. And why is that? Well, I'll get to that, but I'm, I'm more of the mind that we've been seeing it fulfilled we have been seeing it fulfilled, which is different than wondering or asking, well, when is Psalm 83 going to be fulfilled? I not only think that we are seeing it, that we are seeing it, I think we've been seeing it. I've often suggested, folks, the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. Israel may have been reborn in a day, but the process took time from at least 1917 to 1948, around 30 years. And 75 years has passed since 48 when Israel was reborn for this confederacy to form. So in my opinion, everyone under the age of 75 has been watching the Psalm 83 prophecy unfold, most without realizing it, including myself. I also think asking ourselves the question, how long will it take God to complete the Psalm 83 prophecy where he sort of, you know, he hangs it on his wall of past fulfilled prophecies is futile since it's not going to reverse itself. And its fulfillment results in something else that continues on, which is Ezekiel 38, certainly with some period of time in between. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. That's verse 4. Well, Steve, from the Philistines to the Nazis, the Jewish people have been plotted against. So what, what sets October 7th apart from all the rest? Timing, uh, approaching the 80-year mark for one, as well as all the playing pieces on the board. I think, the, I think the chess match, folks, really began long ago. We're not waiting for someone to make the first move. And keep in mind the number 10. See how your enemies growl, 
how your foes rear their heads. With cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Verse 3. With one mind, they plot together. They form an alliance against you. They form. How long has this been forming? Probably during your lifetime. It is a 10-member coalition in Psalm 83 that forms a covenant with each other against not only the nation of Israel, but the God of Israel. The, the coalition is not satisfied to just destroy Israel as a nation. They want to wipe out the memory of the name of Israel, in effect, breaking the Abrahamic covenant. Does the Abraham Accords come to mind? It's probably one reason, I think, why Hamas attacked Israel uh, October 7. In the Abrahamic covenant, God pledges that a chosen people will come through Abraham, through Isaac, and through Jacob. And that God would give them the promised land. We know that from Genesis and Joshua. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the heavens and I'll give them all these lands. And, th it is, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Genesis chapter 26. Now, if you're at one of these uh, many protests going on today, but you know, pro-Israel, pro-Palestinian protests, you got to decide whether this really is the Word of God or not. Because it is accurate, it is reliable, and no adversary can thwart God's plans. It's, it, it, it's going to happen. His covenant with Abraham is unconditional. It's everlasting. Despite their disobedience, which he foresaw, he said he would bring his people home to their own land after a period of exile. He did that. And he said it's not for their sake, the people of Israel, that he's doing that, these things, but for his name's sake, his, his holy name's sake, which they have profaned among the nations, but he'll take them out of the nations. He'll gather them from all the countries and bring them back into their own land. He did that. He did that. So in my estimation, God has been, has been fulfilling this prophecy and others like it, much to the dismay of Ishmael and Esau. It's a 10-member coalition. Uh, Asaph specifically identifies 10. With one mind, they plot together. They form an alliance against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab, the Hagrites, Biblos, that's Jebal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia, with the people of Tyre. Even Assyria has joined them to reinforce Lot's descendants. That's verses 5 through 8. You have prolific writers like uh, Salus, uh, Richardson, a number of others have done your homework for you. The tents of Edom, that's the Palestinians and Southern Jordanians. The Ishmaelites, the Saudis. Uh, Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Moab, Palestinians and Central Jordanians. The Hagrites, the, the Egyptians, Hagar, Hagar is the matriarch of Egypt. Jabal, Biblos, Hezbollah, and northern Lebanese. Ammon, Palestinians and northern Jordanians. Amalek, that's the Arabs of the Sinai area. Philistia, that's Hamas of the Gaza Strip. Tyre, Hezbollah, and southern Lebanese. Assyria, Syrians, and northern Iraqis. And this coalition's goal, what is it? It's to destroy Israel. 
These nations exist today. They are all to some extent united in their hatred for Israel, whether they've officially united or not, or whether they admit it or not, or whether they backpedal or not. The fact is they are already united under the values of Islam, which is a sibling rivalry that dates back to Ishmael and Isaac and Esau and Jacob. This ancient resentment is a major reason for any attack against God's people Israel, not to mention you, whoever or wherever you are, because your enemies seek global domination. Of course, these Psalm 83 countries are actively conspiring today to either take the land and make it their own or exterminate the Jews like Hitler nearly did. How could we not view this prophecy as being presently fulfilled in our lifetimes? It, it's, it's much harder to believe it isn't. Obadiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah uh, all prophesy that these coalition members will indeed perish and they'll be cursed. Many of you are familiar with Genesis 12, 3. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. A resulting sense of regional security will make Israel ripe for the battle of Ezekiel 38, the invasion of a 10-member coalition whose leaders say, I'll go up against the land of unwalled villages I will fall upon the, the quiet people who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls and having no bars or gates to seize, spoil, and carry off plunder. Ezekiel 38. This has to happen. And I believe the operation is underway for that to happen. While Israel today is, is, is without a doubt prospering and in a semi-safe country to visit, she will have incredible riches and, and she'll live in unparalleled safety after the victory of Psalm 83 is complete. Her territory expands greatly. Another reason why I'm taking this position, folks, is because God in Psalm 83 lists the Palestinians first, the tents of Edom. He lists them first, and it's verse 7, I believe. I believe it's verse 7. And today that coalition, which is united under the common values and motives of Islam, it fits the prophecy's requirements like no other time in history. None of the 10 coalition members of Psalm 83 are mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38, in that particular chapter. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, Keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Isaiah 62, verses 6 and 7. So now I, I want to present you folks with 12 eerie facts concerning October 7, 2023. Okay? Number one, Israel's 9-11. It's, it was worse than the U.S. Uh, ge geopolitical, geographically, population-wise. Number two, the number seven. That's a perfect number, meaning completion. The attack occurred on the last day, the seventh day of Tabernacles. All three. The attack took place in, in, in month seven, Hebrew calendar, on October 7. That's Gregorian calendar. All three. All three. Psalm 83, verse 7, God mentions Palestine, the Philistines. We're coming up on the seventh year from the Revelation 12 sign. There are seven years in between those two American eclipses. There's that Trump 7 phenomenon, which we talked so much about. Uh, the tribulation period is spoken of as being seven years. Seven means completion. Number three, the number 50, October 6 and 7 is also the day the Yom Kippur War started, depending on your time zone, 50 years ago. And 50 symbolizes deliverance 
or freedom from a burden. 50th year uh, on atonement, God commanded a jubilee be declared, Leviticus 25. Uh, there's 50 days resurrection to Pentecost, so I'm going to include 50 in my reasons. Number four. The Israel government, 1951. On this day in history, Ben-Gurion formed the Israeli government. The attack occurred on that day. Number five, the Hebrew calendar, 3761 B.C. On this day in history, the origin of the modern Hebrew calendar, the, the, the proleptic Julian calendar, was established. Number six, the temples and the Sabbath. Both the first and the second temples were destroyed on the ninth of Av. Now, this didn't occur on the ninth of Av, but it was on a Sabbath. Both temples on a Sabbath. Ninth of Av, Saturday, the Sabbath, July 23, 586 B.C., first temple burned to the ground. The second temple burned to the ground on the ninth or the tenth of Av from Saturday, the Sabbath, August 2, to Sunday, August 3, in 70 AD. Hamas attacked Israel on October 7, which was a Sabbath. So I'm going to include Sabbath in my reasons. Number seven, the creation. Since the 9th century AD, various dates between 3762 and 3758 BC have been advanced by Jewish scholars as the time of creation, but the exact date of October 7, 3761, B.C. is now generally accepted in Judaism. So I'm going to include that reason. Number eight, the U.S., 9-11, War on Terror, 2001. It was on this day in history, October 7, 2001, a U.S.-led coalition invaded Afghanistan. And America were both surprised by their 9-11 type attack. Number nine, it's Putin's birthday. It was Putin's birthday. Putin, is, who was at war with, the, with Ukraine, he was born on that date, October 7th. Number 10, Hein Heinrich Himmler, the Holocaust SS military commander who led the, the, the Third Reich and was responsible for setting up the notorious death camps. He went down in history as one of the leaders who directly carried out the Holocaust. He was born on that day. Number 11, Pentecost. Next year, 2024, it is seven months, seven days before Pentecost, uh, from October 7 to Pentecost. It's on a May 14, May 14, the first Pentecost. May 14, Israel's Independence Day. She'll turn 76. And finally, Hamas, number 12. The Hebrew word Hamas basically means physical violence or arising from wicked plans. It's quite common in Scripture, and the usages speak of how God is provoked by Hamas to bring judgment upon the enemies of His people and also to intervene in order to save His people. Amazing how God encapsulates the reason for His terrible judgment against Edom into a single word, violence. In Hebrew, this word is chamas, believe it or not, strikingly similar to the name of the Palestinian terrorist organization Hamas. Chamas suggests immoral, cruel violence going hand in hand with slaughter in Scripture. The Bible states that Edom will be cut off with the same slaughter and in the same manner by which she treated Israel with violence, that is, with Chamas. Modern day Jordan, uh, the Edomites descended from Edom, whose birth name was Esau, the older twin brother of Jacob. Uh, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated, that's not a very popular verse. Zechariah chapter 2 describes Israel as the apple of his eye because Esau's perpetual enmity and violence against Israel are fingers in God's eye. I believe he takes extreme displeasure in that. The, the Edomites rebelling against God's will picked on one whom God has chosen. 
And that is sin, folks, not only against Israel, but also against God. Rather than humbly bowing before his will that the older shall serve the younger, Edom has waged perpetual war against Jacob's descendants. In doing so, she has, in effect, declared war against God. Not a good thing to do. Now, there are several other things. There's two dates from 2022 that are destined to echo in geopolitical history. The first is Russia's invasion of Ukraine on February 24. Uh, hardly needs further elaboration. The second is October 7, 2022, when the U.S. enacted a new set of export controls designed to cripple China's future progress in AI technology. Uh, the founding of, Pe of the People's Republic of China uh, held nationwide. Uh, it's a seven-day holiday from October 1 to October 7 called Golden Week. And I'm still looking into that date and looking at uh, a lot of other data that, that seems, to, at least to me, to support that we are living in not just an unprecedented time. We are living in a time in which Christians around the world are more than you would think are looking up because I, they believe that their redemption draweth nigh. That's what we believe. I hope you believe that too. So well, that's it. That's, uh, that's the Wednesday night shakedown on this. I, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Join us, in, join us as we enter into the third and final chapter of our study in 2 Corinthians this Sunday. I love you all, I truly do. Dearly beloved, rest in Him. Let, you not, let not your heart be troubled. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.